my group, we actually use a lot of ESXi servers. You would think that after using these things for 10 years, I would know how to speak, uh, but I do not. Um, we use these for virtualizing machines. Uh, some, of, some of these actually run sandboxes or you know, run kind of dubious software on it. So we really do want to prevent these processes from jumping from the virtual environment to the hypervisor environment. Um, we have today, uh, we have F1YYY. He wants to be known by F1YYY, so I'm respecting that. Um, and uh, he's from Triton Security Labs. And he's going to show us um, how he, uh, uh, the exploits that he discovered in the, I think it was the last um, uh, Chinese geek pwn uh, captures the flag. And he's going to show us how these things work. And with that, I would like to help, I'd like to ask you to help me uh, welcome F1 YYY onto the stage. Okay. Is it? Hello? 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 Uh, thanks for the instruction. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm F1 uh, a senior security researcher at Chantin Technology. Technology. I'm going to present the great escape of ESSI, breaking out of a sandbox virtual machine. Uh, we have demonstrated this full explode chain at GeekPoint 2018. I will introduce the, our experience of escaping the sandbox on the ESSI. I will also introduce the work we have done about the sandbox on the ESSI. Now, let's start it. We come from the Chantan Security Research Lab. We have researched many practical targets in recent years, including PS4 jailbreak, Android routing, IoT offensive research, and so on. Some of us also play CTF with Team Bloop and T-Delivers. We recently own the championship at uh, HitCon final. We are also the organizer of the real world CTF. We created some very hard challenges this year. So if you are interested in, in it, we welcome you to participate in our CTF game. Now, before we start our uh, journey to escaping the virtual machine, we need to figure out what virtual machine escape. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, some of you that, did anyone use the uh, virtualization software? If you have used the uh, virtualization software like VMware Workstation, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, and so on, please raise your hands. OK, 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 thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> oh, many. Uh, so, if you are a software engineer or a security researcher, you probably have used a, a virtualization software. Uh, but if anyone has heard the word virtual machine escape, if you have heard that, please raise your hand again. Oh, oh surprised. <laughs> thanks. thanks, thanks. Oh, uh, it, it surprised me that all of you know about that, but I have to introduce that uh, again. Uh, what's virtual machine escape? In normal circumstances, the host OS runs on the hypervisor, and uh, the hypervisor will handle some sensitive instructions executed by guest OS. Host OS emulates virtual hardware and uh, handles RPC requests from the guest OS. That's the architecture of normal virtualization software. And the guest OS is isolated from each other and cannot affect the host OS. However, if there are some bugs or there are, if there are some vulnerabilities existing in the host OS, it's possible for the guest OS to escape the, from the virtualization environment they can exploit these vulnerabilities. And finally, 
they can execute arbitrary code on the, co on the host. So this is the virtual machine escape. Then why we choose ESSI as our target? The first reason is uh, we know that more and more companies are using or plan to use private cloud to store its private data, including these companies. And uh, the vSphere is uh, an enterprise solution offered by VMware. It's popular between companies. If you are a net manager of a company, you may know about VMware vSphere. And the ESSI is the hypervisor for of VMware vSphere. So it's widely used in private cloud. That's the first reason. The second one is that it's a challenging target for us. Uh, there are several ex exploitations of VMware Workstation in recent years. Hackers escape from the VMware Workstation by exploiting some vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities existing in graph graphic cards, network cards, and uh, USB devices, and so on. But there has been no public escape of ESSI before. So it's a challenging target for us, and we, we love challenge. Then why is, uh, why is ESSI so challenging? The first reason, I think, is that there are little documents about its architecture. The only thing we can find is a white paper offered by VMware. The white paper only includes some definitions and pictures without details. So let's take a brief look at the architecture of ESSI first. ESSI is an enterprise bare metal hypervisor, and it includes two parts. The kernel, it uses VM kernel developed by VMware, and the user world, and the other part, the user world. The VM kernel is a POSIX-like operating system, and it uses an in-memory fuel system. It means that all fuels stored in this fuel system are not persistent. And uh, the VM kernel also manages hardware and uh, schedules results for ESSI. VM kernel also includes VMVM drivers, IO stacks, and some user world API offered to the user world. And the word user world, user world is used by VMware to refer the processes running, on, running in VM kernel operating system. And the word user world means that a group of these processes. These processes can only use a limited proc directory and limited signals. And they can just use a some of the POSIX API. For example, there are some user world processes like hostd, sshd, vmx, and so on. Then, that's the architecture of ESSI. I'd like to give you an example to show how a virtual machine works on ESSI. The VMS process in the user world can communicate with the VMVM by using some undocumented, customized system call. And the VMVM will initialize the environment for the guest OS. When guest OS executes some sensitive, uh, sensitive instructions, it will cause a VM exit and return to VMM. The VMS process also emulates virtual hardware and uh, handles RPC requests from the guest. That's how a virtual machine works on ESSI. Then, how can we escape from the virtual machine on ESSI? If there is a vulnerability in the virtual hardware of the VMX, we can write a driver or write an exploit to escape from it. The driver will communicate with the virtual hardware, and it can exploit the vulnerability. And fin finally, we can execute shellcode in the VMS process. So 
it means that we successfully escaped from the virtual machine on the ESSI. So the second reason about why ESSI is so challenging is that use the word API. The VMX uses many undocumented uh, undocu undocumented and customized system calls. And if you want to reverse some code of VMX, it, it, it's hard for you to understand which API the VMS is using. But luckily, we find two system call tables after uncomprising the K.B00 field. There are two system call tables we found with symbols. So this field will be useful if you want to reverse some code of the VMX. This is the second reason. Thirdly, there are some security mitigations here, uh, including ASLR and uh, NX. It means that we may need uh, to link some address information before we start our exploit to, to break the randomize of the address space. Furthermore, after testing, we found that there is another mitigation on the ESSI. There is a sandbox. There is a sandbox that isolates the VMS process. So even you can execute some shellcode in the VMS process, you cannot e execute any commands. You cannot read uh, any sensitive fields unless you escape from the sandbox either. And finally, we think that the VMS of ESSI has a smaller attack surface. After comparison of the VMS binary between the workstation and the ESSI, we found that there are some functions have been removed from the VMS in the user world to the VM kernel. For example, the packet transmission function in E1000 netcard has been moved from the VMX to the VM kernel. And you, if you have read some security adversaries, published by VMware in, uh, recently, you can notice that there are many vulnerabili vulnerabilities existing in the packet transmission part of E1000 netcard. And all these vulnerabilities only affect workstation. So as we think that the VMS of ESSI has a smaller attack surface. Now, let's start the journey of escaping from the ESSI. Let's overview the entire exploit chain first. We use two memory corruption vulnerabilities in our exploit. The first one is an uninitialized stack usage vulnerability, which CVE number is CVE 2018-6981. And the second is an uninitialized stack read vulnerability, and the CVE number is CVE 2018 6982. And we can do arbitrary address free by using the first vulnerability. And we can get information linkage from the second one. After combining of these two vulnerabilities, we can do arbitrary shellcode execution in VMS process. And finally, we use a, log we use a logic vulnerability to escape the sandbox of VMS and reverse a uh, root shell from the ESSI. So that's the enter explore chain we use. Now, let's start the first, first one. The first vulnerability is an uninitialized stack usage vulnerability. It exists in VMS NAS3 netcard. When VMS NAS3 netcard tries to execute command update Mac filters, it will use a structure on the stack, the physics memory page structure. This structure is used to represent the memory mapping between the guest and the host. And it's also be used to transport data between the guest and the host. Then the VMN net will call function DMA create to initialize the structure on the stack first. Then it will use this structure to execute this command. And finally, it uses physics memory release 
to destroy the structure, uh, the structure, the physical memory page structure. So it seems that there are no problems here. But if even but if we look at the function DMA memory create, we can notice that there is a check before the real, the initialization of the physics memory page structure. It will check uh, the argument address and the argument size, and if the pa if the check passes, then it will initialize the structure. But if the check fails, it will never initialize the structure on the stack. And finally, we found that we can control the address argument by writing a value to one of the registers of VMS NAS3. What's, what's worse is that in function physics memory release, there is no check about if the physics memory page structure has been initialized. And it's just a free a pointer of the, this structure. So let's think about it. If we can pad the data on the stack, it's possible for us to do arbitrary address free. We can pad a fake physics memory page structure on the stack and then make the check fields in the function DMA memory create. And finally, when it comes to the physics memory release, it will free a pointer of our physics memory page structure. So we just tried to find a function to pad the data on the stack. There is a design pattern in software development. We will store the data into the stack if the, small, if the size is small when we allocate some memory. And we, otherwise, we will put it into the heap. And we find a function that fits this pattern. This function will be used when our guest OS executes the, the instruction out SP. It will check the size. If the size is smaller than 0x8000, it will use the stack to store the data. And finally, it will copy the data we send from the guest into the stack. So we can use this function to pass the data on the stack. Then, how do we combine this to do arbitrary address free? We can use AutoSP instruction in guest OS first to pad the data on the stack. This, this data should, in, should contain a fake physics memory page stru structure. And the page count of this fake structure should be zero. And uh, the page error of this fake physics memory page structure should be the address we want to free. Then we set some registers of the VMS NAS3 to make the check fields in the function DMA memory create. And uh, finally, we order the VMS NAS3 net card, execute the command update Mac filters, and the then in the VMX, it will use the physics memory release to destroy the structure we had before. This structure is the fixed structure we had in the first step. And uh, it will check the page count if it's zero. If it's zero, it will free the page area of this fixed structure. So we can do arbitrary address free now by using the first initialized stack usage vulnerability. Here comes the next one. Uh, the, uh, the second vulnerability also exists in the VMS NAS3 net card. When VMS NAS3 net card tries to execute command get policy, it will first, uh, it will first get a, a lines from the guest, and the lines must be 16. Then it initializes the first bit of a structure on the stack. But it's uh, just uh, for guests to initialize the next 8-bit of this structure and uh, just uh, write this structure back to our guest OS. So we can link 8-bit initialized data on the stack from the host to our guest. And after debugging the VMS process, we realize that 
there are fixed offsides between the images. So it's possible for us to get all the address, address all the information about the address space by using this vulnerability. Now, what do we have now? We can do arbitrary address free by using the first one, and we can get all information about the address space by using the second one. What, what do we want to do? We want to do arbitrary shellcode execution in the VMX. So how do we combine these two vulnerabilities to achieve our target? It's hard for us to do arbitrary shellcode execution by using arbitrary address free. But it's easy for us to do arbitrary shellcode execution by using arbitrary address write. So our target changes into how to do arbitrary address write by using arbitrary address free. Then we realize that we need a structure. And this structure should uh, include pointers we can write and the size. So once we can overwrite this, this structure, uh, we can do arbitrary address write easily. And uh, when we first try to exploit this vulnerability, uh, we used some structures in the heap. But we found that we can not manipulate the heap's layout, layout stably, because the VMX frequently allocates and releases memory. So we cannot use the structures in the heap. And uh, after reversing some code of VMX, we find a structure. The structure's name is channel, and it's used in VMware RPCI. Uh, what's VMware RPCI? VMware has a series of RPC mechanism to support communication between the guest and the host. And it has an interesting name, backdoor. RPCI is one of them. And the other words we, we may be familiar with is uh, VMware toys. I'd like to ask again if anyone has installed VMware toys in your guest OS, please raise your hands again. No. Oh, not, 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 as, not as much as before. So uh, if, you use a, if you use a VMware workstation, you probably have installed the VMware toys in your guest. Because once you installed it, you can use some convenient functions, such as uh, copy and pass the data and fields between the guest and the host, uh, drag and drop fields, and build, create a shell folder, and so on. VMware toys are implemented by using some, uh, some RPCI commands. And here are some examples about, uh, about uh, some RPCI commands. For example, we can use info site, guest info, info site to set some information about our guest. And we can use some, we can use info get to retrieve this information back. Then, what happens when we execute this RPC command in our guest? For example, if we execute this RPC command, info site, guest info point A, one, two, three, in our guest OS, what happens in VMX? It will cause a VM exit first, and finally it will return to the RPC handler of VMX. Then the RPC handler will choose a sub command to use by checking the volume of the registers of our guest OS. The RPC toy in our guest OS will use the sub command open first to open a channel and uh, initialize it. Then it will use a subcommand send the line to set the size of our channel and uh, re allocate a uh, heap memory to store the data of our RPC command. And thirdly, it will use a send command, send data subcommand to pad the data on, uh, of the memory we allocated before. And once the lines of the data we send from the guest equals to the size we set from the 
send line subcommand, the VMS will use a corresponding RPCI command handler function after a string commemoration. And finally, it will use a close subcommand to destroy the channel structure, including set the size to zero and free the data pointer. So that's what happens when we execute this RPCI command in our guest. Furthermore, there is a channel structure area in the data segment we can use. So this is a perfect structure for our exploit. Now, we've got all the things we want. We've got two vulnerabilities, and we've got the structure we want. How do we combine this? We notice that the VMX use, uses PT malloc of glabc to manage its heap. So we just choose to use a fast beam attack. What's the fast beam attack? Fast beam attack is a method to exploit heap vulnerabilities of PT malloc by using the singly linked list. And it's the easiest uh, uh, exploit method to exploit the PT malloc, I think. It's also the first uh, method to exploit uh, the PT malloc I learned when I just uh, started to learn how to, how to exploit. Then, after considering uh, the check existing in the GLAB, see, we decided to free the address at the reply index of channel N. Because by doing that, the GLFC will treat this address as a fake chunk. And uh, the GLFC will check the current chunk size. And after doing that, the size of the fake chunk is also the size of the channel N. So we can set a valid value to the size of the channel N and to bypass the check. So we can bypass the check. Once we free this address, this fake, uh, this fake chunk will be put into the fast bin link list first. Then we can reallocate this fake chunk by using another channel N, N plus two. Now we have a data pointer pointed at the reply index of channel N. And we can easily overwrite the channel N plus one by using channel N plus two. We can send the data to channel N plus two. And finally, it will overwrite some parts of the channel N plus one. So it's easy now for us to do arbitrary address write by faking some parts of the channel structure. Then, do you remember our target? Our target is to do arbitrary shellcode execution in VMS. And we can do arbitrary address right now. Uh, there are many ways to do arbitrary shellcode execution by using arbitrary address write. We choose to use a uh, drop. We can, uh, we can overwrite the got PLT segment. We can fake the channel N plus one structure first. Uh, uh, overwrite the data pointer of channel N at N plus one to the address of a uh, got PLT segment. Then we can overwrite the uh, data point uh, a function pointer. Sorry, a function pointer on the got PLT segment. So once the VMX uses this function, we overwrite it will jump to our job gadget. So. Uh, it's also easy for us to do, uh, to, to do arbitrary shellcode execution by using wrap. So now we can do arbitrary shellcode execution in the VMS process. Uh, we think that we have escaped from the virtual machine of the, on the USSR successfully. We tried to execute, uh, execute some command by using system call SAVE, but it fails. We try to open and read some sensitive fields, just like password. It fails again. Then we realize that 
there is a sandbox. We cannot execute any commands unless we, is, we escape the sandbox either. So the next part comes to, comes to the how we analyze and escaping the sandbox. After realizing that there is a sandbox in, on the ESSI, we reverse some code of the VM kernel, and we find a kernel module named as VM kernel assess control system. And this system, this module implements the fine grained checks through system call. And uh, it seems that this sandbox is a rule based sandbox. So we just tried to find the configure field of this sandbox. We finally found it at this directory, etc. VMware sec policy domains. And, it's, and it seems that there are many different sandboxes offered by VMware to the different processes in the user world, like app, plugin, and the global VM DOM is a fuel for our VMS process and for our VM, VM. After reading that, it's obvious for us that the all the Voron directory is the only directory we have read and write permissions. Then we look at the fields existing in this directory. We got uh, a lot of PID fields, just like crowd PID, DCI PID, and so on. And it's also obvious that the INID conf field is the only config field we can write. Then we just, uh, uh, what's INID? Uh, what's INID? INID is open source software, and uh, it's a super server domain that provides internet serv services. Then we just uh, analyze the content of the INID conf. Uh, the content of the INID conf is here on the ESI side. Uh, we can find that it uh, defines two services, SSH and uh, the OSD. And uh, some of it defines uh, which binary will be used by different services. For example, the ISBIN OSD will be used by the OSD services. Then, also, after some testing, we realize that the OSD service is always enabled where SSH service is not. So this is the only configure field we can write. Then we got an idea. How about overwrite this configure field? Or we can overwrite the binary part for OSD. Like that, we can overwrite the ISBIN OSD to bin SH. So once we can restart the INID process, we can bend the shield as the port the OSD is using. Then we just find a way to restart the INID process. We analyze the config view of the sandbox again, and we found that the Q system call we can use in the VMS process. Then we just use the Q hub to restart the INID process. Once the INID process restarts, we can execute any commands by sending them to the port the OSD using. So that's the method we use to escape from the sandbox. And uh, here's the demo. Oh, sorry. Uh. Oh, it seems that I can I cannot play this video, but but it's okay. You can find it on the YouTube, and uh, we created this demo after the GeekPoint 2018. We uh, get a reverse shell after executing the exploit in our guest OS. So uh, uh, that's all. And if you want to get more details about our exploit chain. 
please check our paper here. And uh, that's all. Thanks. So I don't think I'm actually worthy to, to share the stage with F1 YYY. That was awesome. Um, <clears throat> if you have questions, we have microphones. You need to come up to the microphone, uh, line up behind them, um, and uh, we'll take your question. Meanwhile, uh, does the signal angel have anything? No questions yet. Do we not have questions from the audience? There's one. Can I have number six, please? OK. Um do you talk to VMware for this uh, little hack? <laughs> uh, we have reported all these vulnerabilities to uh, VMware after the Geekpoint 2018. And it has been one year after it pro uh, repaired it. OK, thanks. That's definitely a relief. Uh, number one, please. Uh, first of all, thanks for the great talk. Um, I just wanted to know if there is any meaningful thing a system administrator can do to lock down the sandbox further so that uh, we can have some preventative, um, basically, tasks for our ESXi setups, or if there is nothing we can do except patching, of course. Uh, uh, I'm afraid. Can you repeat your question? It's, it's, it's too fast for me. <laughs> Sorry about so, that. Um, basically, is there anything you can do as an administrator to lock down the sandbox even more so that this is impossible or that it is harder than what you showed? Uh, OK, this, that was the first question. You can set the sandbox down by executing a command on the ESSI shell. I, I didn't uh, uh, put the command here. I, I found the command to side the uh, sandbox down. Uh, you can uh, find it by searching the documents about the ESSI. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I, I found it by using some, I, I found it just by myself by using the command offered on the ESSI shell. It's, it's not documented in the uh, by the VMware. OK. Uh, I, I, will share, I will share this command on my Twitter later. Sorry about that. I didn't uh, put this command into my slides. But would this have prevented the attack? Prevented? Uh, w w um, would it, would it, it by, by doing that change, uh, by doing that command, would it be possible to, pre to prevent the attack that you just showed? Uh, the sandbox is used to protect uh, the VMS process. So uh, if you update your ESSI, I think that uh, it, it will be safe. Yeah. OK, great. We have, a, we have a question from the internet. Yes. Does this exploit also work on non-AMD V, VTX enabled VMs using binary translation? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so so is, it, is it more universal than just the AMD? Was it VX? Uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Can you repeat that again? I, I, just, I, I just hear the... Uh, the, yes. the OK. Uh, does it also work on non-AMD V or VTX enabled VMs using binary translation? Uh, hmm. Yes. Because all these vulnerabilities exist in the, in the virtual hardware. Ah. Yeah, you, you, will be, you, you will need to use the virtual hardware in your virtual machine. Yeah. So um, any further questions? I'm not seeing anybody on the microphones. Any further questions from the internet? That's it. Then could please everybody help me in thanking F1YYY for this fantastic talk. <laughs>